So good afternoon. First of all, in name of Rebecca and mine, we would like to thank the organizers for accepting us here in this conference. We're very excited. So, um, the development of Portuguese RNA archaeology was entangled with a few important factors, such as the diversity of Portuguese territory translated into different forms of occupation of it, conforming, by consequence, different landscapes and a diachronic social and historical evolution on the territory. Up to date, there are at least 1,938 uh, sites with Iron Age occupation registered at the Portuguese portal of archaeology. This decodes into a different and diverse number of archaeological contexts and interpretations, having in common the usage, usage of textual sources, such as travel that refers to gender roles in these communities, and also the patriarchal and androcentric discourses practiced in Portuguese archaeology since the 19th century. In this context, contests, as regards to other activities in the area of Archaeo science, archaeology also began as an exclusively male activity, not only due to the requirements of academic higher education easily accessible to men, but also because women were conducted to the household manage. And another follow-up was the frequent displacement that this science required, which wasn't always compatible with cultural and social imposed uh, standards of women until the few years ago. So to better understand this scenario, uh, we have to refer the study done by Jacinta Bugalhão uh, regarding the role uh, of women in Portuguese archaeology. As you can observe in the graphics uh, produced by Jacinta, the previous uh, context, context uh, gradually changed. And so the, there was an enduring number of women that integrated the study of Iron Age. Um, it is noticeable that in the 1970s and early 80s, coinciding with an important moment of political and social change in Portugal, the Carnation Revolution of Wilson dos Cravos, the number of female scientific directors grew considerably, both in absolute and relative terms, and women definitely entered archaeological practice. In the last two decades of the 20th century, Diversification of archaeological activity and the progressive professionalization of archaeologists are marked by the steady growth in the number of archaeologists and their relative value. At the end of the millennium, uh, the profession of archaeologists already revealed the situation of fully gender parity, as women began progressively taking their natural place in the archaeological practice. And as we look at the graphic of academic uh, education, it can be concluded that the female population achieves between 1991 and 2001 values compatible with parity gender in the acquisition of academic superior qualifications. Uh, in this sense, in spite of the, uh, in spite the initial predominance of men in the archaeological practice and consequently in RNH studies, we observe the gradual interest uh, and engagement of women in, in the practice and research of this period. Um, if, we, if you look at these prim two primarily uh, graphics uh, that ha have been produced this year <laughs> during my research. The develop, uh, the, um, we can observe uh, the growing number of female researchers in RNH um, reaching between the year 2000 and 2015 uh, par parity. Um, as regards to the research topics, we see the predominant study of settlements and their pattern distribution alongside with ceramic typologies, which reveals that even with um, the large interests of women in the study of this period, they kept up uh, with the current theoretical trends that were practiced in the Iron Age studies, meaning that their integration didn't impact vi the visibility of gender perpetuating an already existing line of work. So this led us to review the gender discourses that were practiced by these researchers in archaeological interpretation in order to analyze their evolution and identify current trends. 
one of the aspects uh, that stands out in the 80s and the 90s of the 20th century is a common reference of textual sources, like the geography of Strabo, uh, to address the gender roles in our Iranian society. As regards to the north, north of, the, of the country, the author Armand, Armand Silva, while address, addressing the Iranian economy, refers that, according, quoting, according to the testimony of several authors, um, classic authors, the set of agricultural activities um, was carried out by women who cultivated the land and certainly also accompanied by the children and the elderly when uh, in charge of gathering uh, natural fruits, while men dedicated themselves to war and warfare plunder. Also mentions that, also quoting, According to the sources, um, sorry, a woman would occupy a fundamental place in the structure um, of these units um, by the transmission of inheritance through the female line, the participation of women alongside men in war, that's contradictory, uh, and their indispensable intervention in food production um, expressively in agricultural, agricultural work um, would have been a sufficient justification to, stra to stra travel to have spoken of a certain uh, matriarchy regime. However, in general terms, uh, women, uh, sorry, uh, the woman must have enjoyed the same social status as men. And based on the identification of numerous prestigious goods, namely uh, gold jewelry worn by women, uh, one can speak of female hierarchy alongside a male hierarchy surely proven. And even if they did not exercise political power, marriage with women of status were, were important, which reveals their role in the game of political alliances between social elites. Still, no analysis within the domestic space or material cu culture was made to address and or verify the gender roles within these communities. This contributes to the absence of women in the archaeological record, only noticeable by these uh, authors through the existence of items as jewelry, um, as I, I've mentioned before, uh, and also in the in the male perspective, uh, that the, um, the 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 male jewelry uh, would be possibly uh, supplied by a Celtic trade. So, continuing to the iconographic in, uh, representation, uh, these authors portray uh, men as warriors and leaders. And as I quote, archaeology suggests a military figure as a, as a leader of the social unit, such as the one we see represented in more than two dozen statues uh, of warriors from the southern uh, Castelhete area, north of Portugal. Uh, whether uh, such uh, chiefdoms were hereditary or elective, um, a long life and long, lifelong or provisional. However, uh, from the analysis of one of these inscriptions, it can be deduced that the chief, chief, chiefship uh, was transmitted uh, by uh, hereditary, since uh, a second prince mentioned uh, there seems to be the son of the first and both have common heirs. So furthermore, as we move to uh, the Iron Age of the south, south, south of Portugal, uh, Mario Gonçalves Mario Gomes, uh, suggests that the funerary practice based in uh, iconography uh, and material cu culture uh, readings alludes to the heroes and warriors, emphasizing the com concept of heroicization, um, despite the existence of a few asexual representations. Anal uh, analyzes a bond that ultimately uh, deal with the construction of masculinity in the orientalization Iron Age. As regards for women, the indi indigenous fema females, um, feminine deities were connected to fertility and productive forces. 
Uh, in contrast uh, to the research of women in the Iberian world, uh, clearly shows that the, there were women of high, uh, ex extremely high status, and that the female element is virtually omnipresent in a segment as fundamental to a traditional society as religious um, and cultic practices. Also, in our study area, the south, the south of present-day Portuguese territory, there is evidence throughout the Iron Age of the ubiquity of the sacred feminine, along with the discourse, perhaps, of greater visibility that privileges the, ma the male figure and the warrior ideal. Um, I, I, I anticipated a slide, sorry. <laughs> These are conceptual models based on prejudice about expected uh, female behavior and about the role of women in society and in production dynamics. Women understood as passive dependent elements linked to the domestic sphere, the secondary productive activities uh, was systematically read in an immediate and uncritical way as pa patenting certain uh, preconceived characteristics. So now, as regards to the funer funerary contexts in the 80s of the 20th century, we know that there was a growing interest in Iron Age uh, in these contexts and in the incineration practice in the light of the new archaeology theory. As the materiality is sparse, um, as are the funerary contexts, the biological analysis uh, has been the primary approach especially in the south of a country uh, where they are better preserved. Even so, despite possible interpretations of social position according to the materiality and biological sex, it is still necessary to explore and articulate other material realities with the communities and their structure. So despite the feminists uh, and gender theory have had impact in archaeology since the 70s of the 20th century, and regardless of the evolutionist historical culture, um, processual or, or postmodern conceptions, the inclusion of gender perspectives has remained the size in the studies of Iron Age uh, societies in Portugal. With the exception of the work of Francisco Gomes uh, from 2011 that addresses uh, in a theoretical perspective gender roles in the attempt to establish um, the potential of gender archaeology in the analysis of the Orientalization Iron Age. It's the only one that we have. Yeah. <laughs> so, final considerations. Um, despite the male predominance in the area uh, in the this pe uh, co concrete period at the beginning of the practice, it slowly improved into a parity discipline in Portugal in 2015. Still, uh, the presence of the integration of women or the, the um, the large part, uh, participant of women in the Iron Age studies didn't change the cur current uh, theoretical approaches that were were used. The um, based on the literary literary sources and icono iconographic male representations in the sparse funerary contexts and other materialities, the reality the reality of North Central Portugal is still a little more exploratory. In the South, the warrior figure and the weapons are predominant representations in uh, Iron Age world. And uh, the, the incineration procedure in a lot of funerary contexts doesn't leave a good margin to export gender. Um, the, in regards to gender roles, uh, the visibility of women in Iron Age um, is practically absent in the research made until nowadays in Portugal. So. Um, as shown, there's a gap in this study um, of Iron Age gender roles and all the archaeological record that has been produced since the 70s still present. Therefore, the main objective of this analysis made in this paper was to evidence the need, the Need, the much needed revolution in the research in this research period, reviewing the past context and materiality and adopting a broad and inclusive posture in the future interventions. Thank you for your attention. Okay.